Greetings, dear ones. My name is Drax16, and thank you for clicking on this video. Today's video is going to be about atheists. It's been a while since I last did a video about atheists or atheism. Basically, an atheist is someone who does not believe in a god or goddess. It's the absence or it's the lack of belief in a god. And so, you know, the Bible, it's very much about God. And so we, as Christians, believe that, you know, that atheism is wrong, obviously. But, you know, that shouldn't, that shouldn't puff us up with pride, you know? We shouldn't think of, we shouldn't be like a holier-than-thou kind of person where you're just in a, you know, where you're just thinking that you're so much better than atheists or something like that. But, you see, that's not the attitude that Jesus or Paul had. You see, Jesus was all about reaching out to those who would be shoved aside. People who, you know, the outcasts of society, you know, prostitutes, tax collectors, uh, women who had bleeding problems, uh, a person who died, a person who was a non-believer, uh, you know, persons who were possessed by demons. He was always reaching out to the outcasts of society. So we should, therefore, reach out to atheists. And it doesn't have to be, you know, that you need to memorize five verses a day for a year. That's not going to, in fact, that might even puff you up with pride if you're not careful. Because you can easily get to think, well, look how holy I am. I've memorized so many scriptures. But you see, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. This is an ESV thin line Bible. It's the one that I use for study. I'm not in my I mean in my personal devotional time I'm reading through the New King James. But when I'm doing a Bible study, I use my ESV thin line. And it's the one that I've had for the longest amount of time. I have I've had it for about like maybe 10 years or something like that. It's starting to fall apart. But I love it. I love reading the Word of God. You see, it's the sword of the Spirit. That means if we're going to do spiritual warfare against the devil, we need to be armed. We need to be armed with the Bible. So I ask you guys today, is your life adding up to it? Are you someone who is a student of Scripture? Are you seeking to set time aside every single day to be in the Word of God? If not, you should be. Because... You know, uh, like in the book of Joshua, for example, God told the prophet Joshua to, med to meditate on his law day and night. And so, you know, prophets were role models, in, in essence. There was, I mean, they performed miracles, they gave prophecies and stuff like that, but they were also role models. So we can learn from the example of Joshua to meditate on God's laws day and night. Anyways, back to the topic, you know. It seems that, you know, you're going to get gossiped about and talk behind your back if you stand up for this book, this Bible. It doesn't have to be this exact Bible, but, you know, I mean, there's like real deliberate forgeries and stuff like that, like the New World Translation, which no one should ever read. But, you know, we need to be armed so that when we do talk to an atheist, we're prepared. So, like I said, I'm not saying you have to memorize scripture every day. If you can, that's great, but that's above and beyond the call of duty. Anyways, so it seems that, you know, with atheists today, a lot of them are taking after the example of guys like Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, and the late, uh, what's his name, Christopher Hitchens. Although I would say Christopher Hitchens did not die as an atheist. He hated the God that he knew was there. And he got so just consumed with anger. And he knew that, that there was, in fact, a God there. That's why he was so angry. If he truly didn't believe, if he truly lacked a belief in God, then he wouldn't have gotten so angry at God whenever he talked about him. He wouldn't be accusing God of being a bully. And so, unfortunately, it's called New Atheism, by the way. It's given that nickname. New Atheism is 
you know, people who follow the teachings of Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens and Sam Harris. I think there's one more guy, but they're called the Four Horsemen of Reason. It's <laughs> nothing that Richard Dawkins says is reasonable, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't think he's an atheist either. It, or if he is, he's at least very evangelistic about it. He's very much, you know, in your face about it. But anyways, so it seems that, you know, because of the advent of new atheism, it seems, and I know this firsthand, I've seen it before, I used to be an atheist, where it seems as though the atheistic community is just in a perpetual circle jerk, where they just talk about how rational they are and how open-minded they are and how open, you know, how accepting and rational and logical they are. It's, it's just, they, you know, new atheists think that they're smarter than us, theists. And I'm not an apologist of theism, but, you know, nothing could be more irrational than denying that there's a God, or than not believing in a God. Nothing could be less natural than that. You know, scientists today generally believe that matter had, a, that matter, you know, solids, liquids, and gases, and stuff like that, they believe that that had a beginning. But atheism can't account for that. So there's really nothing rational about that than to think, um, you know, as Dawkins once said, he said, oh, I think it came from aliens. <sighs> I mean, if you guys have ever watched that movie Expelled by Ben Stein, I mean, you'll see Ben Stein, he, he makes Dawkins look like an idiot. Mm -hmm. I mean, Romans chapter 1 says that, uh, that everyone has some idea about God. Now, some have concluded that this means that there's no such thing as an atheist, but I don't see it that way. I think there are people who genuinely are atheists. I know because I used to be one, and I generally, at one point in my life, I honestly and sincerely did not believe in a deity. It's not because I didn't want to believe, it's that, um, it's that I didn't see a reason to believe. And so, for new atheists, I don't think that most of them are sincere. I think most of them hate God. Not all of them, but most of them seem to hate God, and therefore they hate Christianity. Um, and they get so upset when you finally bring something up like, homosexuality being wrong, and there being an eternal hell, and the fact that they're going to be judged by God one day on Judgment Day. So, you know, if they really lacked a belief in this deity, how can you explain why they get so upset the moment it's brought up? The moment the subject is brought up, they just get so angry. Well, I'll tell you why. It's because most of them secretly hate God. They might not even be consciously aware of it. But their belief in things like evolution and uh, eternality of matter and all of this stuff, that's, that's purely a religious belief. And new atheism is almost a religion. I don't think it gets quite to the extreme, but uh, I don't consider atheism a religion. But new atheism is very evangelistic and in your face about it. So... Yeah, as I was saying, dear ones, make sure that you're active in the Word of God. You don't have to play video games every single day. You don't have to spend hours on YouTube or Instagram and post stuff every day. You don't have to spend hours, heck, even YouTube. You don't have to go to YouTube every single day, but you do have to get to the Bible every day, dear ones. God commands us to meditate on his law day and night. Excuse me. Yes. And you don't even have to cite Bible verses at all when you witness to atheists. You can just ask simple questions like, hey, do you believe that there is a such thing as objective morality? 
Do you believe that there's such a thing as something that's absolutely wrong? Do you believe that there is a such thing as absolutely correct? And analyze what they say. I think they'll have a lot more respect for you if you pose a question like that, rather than you just trying to shove, you know, Bible verses down their throat and say, see, you're going to hell unless you repent of your sins. Even if that may be true, that's not the best way to go about it. Because we have in 1 Corinthians, I believe, chapter 13 or something like that, where Paul says, if I have truth but not love, I'm like a, a clanging cymbal. So it is when we preach to atheists without love. We have to meet them down at their level. That's why Paul talked about, you know, being different. For one under the law, I became as one under the law. For just like a Greek, I became a Greek. So meet people down at their level and analyze them. Challenge the atheist to think about his or her worldview. And when they ask, well, what do you think about objective morality? There it is. There's your opportunity to sneak the gospel, to, not to sneak, sorry, to speak the gospel with them. And once again, do it with love. Don't just say that they're going to hell unless they accept Jesus. Teach them the way that the Bible teaches them, with love. Now, that's not to say you have to lie about it. You don't have to say, well, you know, atheism really isn't so bad, and, you know, gay people aren't so evil anyways. No. You have to be truthful, but you have to speak the truth in a loving manner. So just protesting outside of an atheistic venue, spouting Bible verses at anyone who walks by, I don't believe that that is preaching the gospel as God would have us do it. He wants us to do it with love. So with kindness, with patience, with passion, you know what I mean? But none of that is going to be possible unless we arm ourselves with scripture, unless we're students of the word. So, you know, atheists are everywhere nowadays. There is a lot of them. Probably far more than there was, say, a hundred years ago. Far more. There's far more atheists now than there was in Jesus' time. And, you know, with the thing like evolution and the LGBTQ community and their teachings and, um, you know, secularism and stuff like that, we're being challenged so we need to make sure that we're ready for it. So I urge you, dear ones, please read the Bible every day. But don't just do it for my sake. Do it for your own sake, because you need to be armed with Scripture. Otherwise, you're going to be carried along with every, everything that comes along, every trend. You're going to be like those emergent churches, like Joel Osteen and, you know, Rob Bell and uh, Joyce Meyer and T.D. Jakes, all of these frankly, morons who teach these emergent carnal message, if you're not armed with scripture, then you're not going to be able to stand against movements like that. and Or even atheism. Because, you know, the atheist is going to say, well, yeah, but if you say that God is loving, why would he send someone to hell? You need to be armed with scripture to answer that question. I mean, to answer that question, though, I mean, it's like saying, how could a judge, if he is fair and just, sentence someone to life in prison? Because that's what the crime deserves. So his love, God's love, does not negate his justice. So just because God sends a guilty sinner to hell, that doesn't negate the fact that he's loving. You see, God has a perfect sense of love, but he also has a perfect sense of justice. God does have, well, God has, by definition, the obligation to punish sin, because he hates it. He has every right to do with us whatever he wants, because he created us. But you see, an atheist doesn't like that. Well, they'll say, no, you're wrong, it's not fair, how can finite sins merit an infinite punishment, and stuff like that. But you need to be... You need to have a good understanding of the Bible to answer questions like that. And they, they are answerable. I can't go over every single one of them in this video, but, you know, 
they're there for anyone who has ears to hear, but you see most of them don't have ears to hear. So if you're witnessing to an atheist, if you're talking about morality or philosophy or whatever, bear in mind that they're probably not going to convince right at that very moment. They might, and if they do, praise God. But most of them, I would say, are not going to convert at moment's notice in front of you right then and there. They're going to analyze it. They're going to think about it. And that's what I kind of admire, if I may be so bold. That's what I kind of admire about atheists, in that they don't blindly accept something. They analyze it before they believe in it. And if they find it's irrational, then they don't believe in it. Now, I think that's fine on the surface, but you see, God is the, he's the fountain of knowledge. All that we have, all that we know is from him. So things like philosophy, like ethics and epistemology, all of those things have their source from the infinite, from God, who is the infinite creator. So, um, yeah. Be encouraged. Uh, make sure that you're in the Bible every day. Make sure to share it with atheists, because they desperately need the gospel. Their life, their, not just their life, but their spiritual life is on the line. And so, don't be intimidated by them. In fact, if you are intimidated, well then, ask God to help you with it. You need to ask God to be, you know, in the... the Bible, we're called like, we're like salt. Salt is like, uh, I'm not sure if they did this during Jesus' day, but I know that, you know, in medieval times, at least, people would cover their meat with salt to prevent it from decomposing quickly. Now, the salt doesn't obviously cause it to forever, you know, be fresh, but Salt de slows down the decomposition process. It purifies it. It makes it so that it can s the meat will stay survive for a longer time than you would if you hadn't salted it. So, and that's what we Christians are like. God, Jesus calls. Oh yeah, He is God. But, anyways, He calls us that we're like salt. So, we're like salt on meat. We're we're delaying. The decomposition of our world. We're purifying it. We're preventing it from going rotten. We are lights of the world, Jesus said. I think it was Jesus who said that. Um, so yeah, there's all sorts of helpful stuff. And um, yeah, that's all I have for now. Sorry for if I went on too long, but I started preaching, so I'm sorry if I got a little off topic. But anyways, thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope that all of you have a wonderful day. God bless you.